What's going on, reef builders? I'm Jake Adams coming back to you with an update on the Australian style reef aquarium build. Um, we're pretty much going to focus on discussing the cycling of this aquarium, but I do want to give a little bit of feedback on the aquascape. And, um, you know, we, we usually tend to aquascape a tank dry without any water in it. I mean, generally, that's the easiest way to do it. And, um, that's not a, a, an accurate reflection of what the tank really looks like um, when it's full of water, because you have that diffraction of the water. And I gotta say, this uh, vertical style aquascape, far and away, exactly what I was hoping to do with this tank. The, the moment I filled it up and it filled my field of view when I'm standing up, you know, right about right here looking down, um, that's exactly what I pictured. I'm definitely gonna be. Uh, uh, exploring all of the real estate on the back of the tank, on the walls, in between the rocks. Um, I use silicone and putty and everything is like super tight. I've been trying to pull off some rocks with the, you know some kind of pressure and it, it's just simply not going anywhere. And um, so yeah, very thrilled with how the aquascape is coming together. And I have I have more than enough corals to completely fill up the tank. And uh, what's slowing me down is nothing about the cycle. It's more, it's 100% about taking my time and being considerate with where I place certain corals. Because since they're gonna be glued or fastened to the back of you know, the rock scape, the, the rock wall, um, it's not like a typical reef tank where you can place a coral here or place it there and kind of move them around. Um, once they're glued, they're kind of gonna be in place. So I've decided um, probably in three parts and three different videos, I'm going to basically populate the bottom and that's gonna be mostly like the bubble corals and um, my gold tip elegance coral. And then mid range is gonna be a little bit more of the Micromusa Lords, the Acanbauer Bankies. And then once I get up to the top, that's gonna to be the Scolies um, and some encrusting corals kind of be like supporting actors. And once I feel really confident about the tank, uh, in just a couple weeks probably, I'll uh, put uh, my two Wilson Eye colonies inside of there. But um, for this video, I really wanna talk about cycling. Um, you know, if you're a new aquarist and you're coming into the aquarium hobby, these stores and all the information is just gonna give you <laughs> a big brain dump of you need to cycle your reef tank. You need to cycle your reef tank. You need to cycle your reef tank. And there's all different degrees of what cycling means. You know, at the very most basic degree, we're talking, uh, you know, establishing a bacterial population to handle the nitrogenous waste produced by the fish. And as I discussed and demonstrated in the nano reef tank, which is almost a year old without a water change, um, if you do certain things right, you don't have to worry about the cycle, especially for corals. Now another tier of cycling might be um, going through some of the phases of algae growth. You know, first few days and weeks you're gonna get some diatoms on the glass and then you might get a little bit of hair algae in certain places and uh, the last succession that you wanna get is, you know, generally coralline algae. And um, I think a lot of us experienced reefers, I, that, that doesn't even cross my mind anymore. You know, I am going to start slow and just carefully, deliberately put livestock in here and just kind of watch it as it goes. I know that's not super informative to you guys, but if you're setting up a reef tank, you can put corals in there day one. Like they have such little biology, um, you know, make sure to start out with a reduced photo period and uh, don't run the run lights too bright and uh, don't uh, feed your tank like crazy. That's, that's more important. And to get me through the cycle, I like to have an indicator coral and or some indicator fish to, to, to get the biology kind of started in this tank. So, as you can see, I have one indicator coral in here, the uh, Duncan, Duncan up Samia that uh, we fragged up maybe about two months ago on video. This is a, a strain that I've been growing, I kind of lost count, I want to say it's about 10 years old at least, and it was three or four polyps, and so this is one of the colonies from the major colony that I split up. And 
you know, we take this for granted now, but Australia didn't open up to coral exports until 2007. And before that time, there was no Duncan in the hobby. There was no Moseley in the hobby. There was no Australian Scolies. There was no Bauer Bankies. There were, oh, what was another one? Very few Lords, uh, very few Micromusa Lords. There's a different strains that come from South Asia, but mostly Indonesia, not quite as bright. But um, so we did have Lord Corals in the aquarium hobby before Australia opened up. But once Australia opened up, we had access to all the colors and so many more patterns and so much more diversity. Um, but Duncan is one of those quintessentially Australian corals that we kind of take for granted if Australia ever shut down uh, for whatever reason, there would be no Duncan. So, you know, being able to get Duncan coral in the early days of Australia opening up in 2007, um, that was really, really cool. So I feel like that's a, a very fitting coral to put in this tank to start. And the reason this is a great indicator coral is because it opens and closes its polyps. So it's given me some indication of what's happening in the water, uh, what's happening in the aquarium. Um, this one's polyps are out all the time. So this water right here is fresh seawater. Uh, mixed in the aquarium and uh, did a little interesting trick that I'm going to tell you about in a separate video uh, to calculate the actual volume of this tank. Um, what else? And then I added a pair of uh, black storm clownfish. Um, I call these guys the juggalos, but in my mind, they are the epitome of domesticated clownfish strains because they're just so bold and so bright. It's like you can take it all the way white or you can make it all the way black or all the way orange, but they have a perfect cow print pattern, which is this very regular white and black appearance. And the reason I put them in the Australian tank is once again, uh, maybe even before Australia opened up, we had no access we didn't really, there was no such thing as black oscillaris clownfish. The black oscillaris clownfish came from Darwin, Australia. And so until those were started becoming incorporated in the, uh, I guess the gene pool of uh, domesticated and captive bred clownfish, um, black, was, black and white striping was not a color. There was orange striping and that orange sometimes would get deeper brown, but there was no black clownfish. So these guys are right here uh, from sea and reef aquaculture. I've had them for two years. Um, do that jet black coloration is descendant of Australian uh, black uh, Ocellaris clownfish. So I feel like these two, um, are perfect representations of the type of, of reef life that was not available to us uh, without the help of Australian collectors and suppliers. Um, I've had these guys for about two years. They are so freaking beautiful. They've actually lived kind of in a basket within a tank that had an anemone in it and they just never really left. So they're not really used to swimming around a big tank. And <clears throat> generally, you would not want to start out your tank with clownfish because they might as well be damselfish. But I'm not really planning to put any fish in here that are going to push their buttons, right? So I'm, I'm thinking one lineatus wrasse, a school of assessors, um, a couple of random small fish, really want that school of yellow assessors. Um, but there's no other fish that I plan to put in here that these guys are gonna pick on. And once they settle in, they're probably gonna host the Duncan, uh, more likely they're gonna host uh, the, the Elegance Coral, and they're gonna have their own little spot. So, uh, so yeah, um, some other things I did to kick off this tank, obviously got it salted up to the right level, 33 parts per thousand. Um, I added a nice splash of uh, Brightwell Aquatics Microbacter Start XLM, just a little splash. And because this is a high nutrient aquarium, and I don't wanna just start feeding the fish a ton. I actually took a half gallon of water from the fish aquarium, which I know has a generous amount of nitrates and dissolved organic matter to kind of kickstart the biology in here. And like I said, you don't really need to cycle a tank for, for corals, but having that biology in place, you know, the bacterial population is gonna help the, the, the nutrients uh, not to get totally out of whack and feed uh, the, the algae that would wanna grow in here. Um, the only other thing I've put in here 
is probably the biggest seeds of reef biology is while working on some corals, I uh, uh, knocked a few stomatellas in here. So stomatellas are little nudibranch that have like a small shell, um, very common in aquariums. So that's kind of like the only cleanup crew that I go out of my way to kind of distribute through tanks. And um, they graze everything in the tank and they probably have pods on their shells and a little coralline on their shell and um, different types of uh, algae spores within their gut. And um, that is gonna be a perfect injection of reef ecology and biology into this aquarium. Um, how long has it been, uh, what did I say, say Saturday? I think I've had it salted up since about Tuesday. So we're going on the fifth day of this tank being completely salted up. Um, maybe a little bit longer than that. But yeah, it's uh, doing good so far. I've got this tiny light for a 90-ish gallon aquarium um, set to really blue. Uh, not full intensity and on, not on for too long. So this tank is probably gonna grow more uh, diatoms and general film on the glass from just all the ambient light that comes this direction from all the southern facing windows and from the other tanks. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be a super duper fun tank. I'm going to put up a video describing uh, how I calculated the actual volume of this tank and in subsequent videos we're going to do one where we introduce the bubble corals, another one where we introduce the colonial LPS and then follow that up with um, some of the more showy subsequent solitary uh, scolemias. So thank you for joining me on this video. I hope you found uh, this discussion about reef aquarium cycling uh, interesting and informative. Um, as long as you take it slow and don't do too much at once, I think uh, you should be all right. So uh, if you have any questions about what this tank is about, where it's headed, or what I said about cycling and ecology, go ahead and put those questions in the comments down below. And um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other videos because this is going to be the most detailed tank build I've ever done. So thanks again for joining me on this video and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye guys.